What's up guys, welcome to another electric skateboard video. Today we're talking about motors, uh, which motor is best for you, how to choose a motor, and uh, what options are out there. My name is Mike Beard, I am an electric skateboard enthusiast, I built a ton of electric skateboards, so I have had quite a bit of experience with these motors, so uh, let's dive right into it. So without a motor, your electric skateboard isn't gonna go very far. It might power on, make some noises, but it, it's not gonna actually go forward. Um, obviously, picking the right motor is extremely important. There are a lot of different components that go into building electric skateboards, but people seem to get more excited about their motors. Probably the way people get excited about engines and cars, I'm not sure. So when it comes down to actually choosing a motor, it might seem a little confusing. Uh, if you're not sure what you're looking for, uh, it, it can be very confusing with all the different sizes and brands and all of that. Um, to make it simple, there are two types of motors, um, two mainstream types of motors. There's belt-driven motors and there are hub motors. So belt-driven motors are just a motor that attaches to your electric skateboard and uh, runs a belt that's connected to a pulley and moves your wheel. Hub motors, on the other hand, are just motors that are built into the wheel of the electric skateboard. So they're a little different. Um, both have their pros and cons, but we'll get into that later. So because everybody's needs are different, there is no best motor. At the end of the video, I'm not gonna be telling you what the best motor is because I'm not sure what you want in a board. Some people want the fastest board possible. Some want a board to kill every single hill it, it comes in contact with. Others want a really long range and others just want a really quiet board. So you know who you are. Um, by the end of this video, you should be able to make a decision based on uh, your preferences. So let's start off with belt motors. Belt motors are by far the most popular electric skateboard motor in the DIY community, mostly because you get to choose your wheels and customize your gearing ratio. Hub motors, you don't get to do that, but belt motors, you do. So if you really like the orangutan wheels or really like a specific wheel um, on your longboard, you can absolutely have that freedom um, with the belt motors. But remember, if you do opt for a belt motor, you do have to get a couple extra things. You have to buy a motor mount to mount the actual motor to your skateboard, and you have to get a pulley system to attach the motor to your wheel. So just remember, those two are kind of extra costs, but to me, well worth it. So when you start searching for an electric skateboard motor, especially belt motors, there's a lot of numbers involved, like the, the size and the, the speed and the ratings of all these motors, there's a lot of numbers involved. So I'm gonna break down the, the most important numbers for you so you know what you're looking for when it comes time to buy. The size of electric skateboard motors are indicated by four numbers. In this case, we have a 6355 motor. Basically, all that means is it's 63 millimeters wide and 55 millimeters tall, so 6355. Um, they also make 6374 motors. They make 5055 motors. You'll start to see those numbers pop up a lot when you're looking for electric skateboard motors. Um, but yeah, that's what those numbers mean, um, just the, the width and the length of the motor. So basically when you're looking for a motor, just remember that the bigger those numbers are, the more torque you're gonna have, the more powerful that motor is. In this case, we have a 5055 motor right here next to a 6355 motor here. So you can see the size difference. They're basically the same length, but this one is much beefier, um, which will give you a lot more torque, a lot more hill climbing ability. So you guys get it. The bigger the motor, the more powerful it is. So these three motors, the 5055, the 6355, and the 6374, are basically the most common sizes for motors. So depending on who you're looking at as far as vendor goes, their motors are probably gonna be around those numbers, if not the exact same numbers. Um, but just keep in mind, a lot of motor mounts are made for 63 millimeter um, motors. So the same motor mount that you would use for these would not work for this one. So keep that in mind, these are more popular than this. These are This is a pretty small motor, um, still great, but not as powerful as these, so most people pick these. So there's still one more number associated with electric skateboard motors, and that is KV rating. KV rating is basically RPM per volt. So say your KV rating is 10, and you have 10 volts of electricity, um, 10 times 10 is 100. So with your battery and your uh, motor, you'd have 100 rotations per minute. Those are just example numbers. You're not gonna be dealing with numbers that low, but yeah. We could go really deep into the topic of KV ratings, but it's pretty simple and I'll give you just the bare minimum that you need to make an educated decision. So when you're looking for a motor, you'll wanna find a motor that has a KV rating of about 200. Anything between like 180 and 270 is pretty good, pretty ideal. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, they'll send me a link to a motor and it's got like 3000 KV rating. That does not work. Most most of those are for, for model airplanes and stuff like that. There's just not a whole lot of torque there. So basically, the lower your number, the more torque you'll have, and the higher the number, the more speed you'll have. So at 180, you'll have a little bit more torque than you will speed, and at 270, you'll have a little bit more speed than you will torque. Very, very similar results to all those numbers, but that's something to keep in mind. If you want a little bit of a faster board, 
go a little higher, but I find 180 to 200, like such a sweet spot. I love it so much. So that's what I always recommend everybody. Um, but yeah, around 200 is where you wanna look. So everything I just told you about KV ratings, that's for belt driven motors. Hub motors are a little different. Hub motors, you don't want a, a 200 KV hub motor. You're looking for something around 75. And the reason why it's different is because of the gearing ratio. There is no gearing. Um, gearing changes the, the ratio of how many times your motor spins uh, compared to how many times your wheel spins. But for a hub motor, your wheel spins one time for every time the motor spins. So 75 is lower. So basically your wheels will have a KV rating of, of 75, um, which is great. So just keep in mind for hub motors, you want around 75. For belt driven motors, you want around 200, which brings me into hub motors. So we just talked about a ton of belt driven stuff. I know this is a lot of information, but if you're totally confused on motors, hopefully this will help. Anyways, hub motors, basically very heavy, but the motor is right here within the wheel. There's no belts, there's no mounts, there's no nothing like that, um, which is very appealing. There's very low profile here. There's nothing going on. There's just wires coming out of the, the truck and that's basically it. Um, these are awesome for sure. Um, there's a couple different things you have to think about with hub motors. Um, you don't really get a wheel selection. You can't get to, you can't pick like your favorite wheels that you've always used. You're kind of locked in with these and then the front general regular wheels. There's nothing special about them. You can't use orangutan or anything like that. Um, so that's something to consider. Not a big deal, but you know, someone might really love their wheels and then hub motors are just totally off the table. So you guys would go with the belt motors. Another awesome thing about hub motors is that they're super quiet. They're really, really quiet. There's so much less friction and noise associated with them, but they have a lot less torque. They're not as torquey as belt motors. So hills, still not a problem, especially with dual motors, but they're not gonna be as good as a belt driven board. So um, it is what it is, but the quietness of these absolutely is worth it if you don't live in a super hilly area. So the numbers behind hub motors are very, very similar. Like I said, the KV rating is 75 versus 200, um, but the numbers associated with hub motors, mostly hub motors are dictated by, by the wheel size. So like this is a 90 millimeter set, but if you wanna get really specific into what size and actual motors are, it should be listed in the product description depending on where you're buying it from. But so this case, this is a 73 millimeter by 55. The actual measurement of the motor itself, obviously um, these can't be 90 millimeter uh, motors because there needs to be some kind of room for the um, thickness of the rubber, of the urethane. So. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, the, the larger the number, the, the more torque you're gonna have, the more powerful they're gonna be. Same exact thing with the belt motors. For reference, here's the 90 millimeter set that we have, and here is the 70 millimeter set that we have. Much smaller, but still a ton of little power in this little thing. Like there's, there's good power here. You can get a lot of good speed out of this, um, but look how much smaller they are. So like if you had a, a penny board or a really small short deck, these are awesome. Um, Obviously not as powerful as these. These are more powerful than these, but still a really good deal and, and they're much cheaper than these. So um, yeah. So like all long boards, electric or not, you do have to replace the wheels once in a while. So when you buy hub motors, you do want to look at whether or not the sleeve comes off. Um, in this case, with a couple of screws, this sleeve pops right off and you can replace the sleeve when it gets old. But our 70 millimeter pair, these do not come off because they're so small and the form factor needs to be as small as possible. These, uh, the polyurethane does not come off, which not a big deal. I mean, this is a pretty thick uh, rubber sleeve. I can't imagine how many miles you'd have to put on it before this actually withered all the way down to the motor. Um, but keep that in mind if you really want to be able to switch these out, um, keep an eye out and make sure that they are replaceable. So if you made it this far, hopefully I haven't rambled you to death, um, but there is still one more thing to consider. Um, single motor versus dual motor setups. Um, if you're going with hub motors, dual. All the way dual, um, most places don't even sell single just because um, hub motors are great, but they just don't have a lot of torque. So a single motor would be kind of underwhelming. Um, but so the real uh, debate is whether you get a single belt motor or dual belt motor. If you've already decided on hub, I guess you can stop watching, but if you're still curious, here you go. Um, single motors are great. I've used, uh, my very first build was a, a single 6355 and it was awesome. I never even wanted a second motor ever. Um, but a second motor does give you a lot more hill coming power, way faster acceleration, um, but it does take a toll on your range. Two motors gives you about 70% of the range you would have had with a single motor. So again, that's something to consider. Obviously cost is something to consider. You'll need two motors, two mounts, two pulleys. So 
and you know doubles the price of of your motor budget um, but still really awesome uh, if you want that acceleration so so hopefully you've been able to keep all that in your head I know I've been just yelling at you about motors for the past few minutes but um, here's a chart on the screen to help you kind of make a decision on which motor you uh, would want or what motor best fits your build like always all the links to all the products you've seen today are in the description below um, definitely help support the channel if you check those out and uh, potentially get your motor from us and uh, yeah so again all of our social links are in the description subscribe if you're into electric skateboards and, and love building them and you want to learn more um, yeah anyways have a good rest of your day and uh, we'll see you next time with another electric skateboard video